Hello everybody and welcome to Learning with Chrono. Today we will be revisiting the smithy I showed off in a previous episode and taking a closer look at hoppers in general. When I decided that I was going to build an automated smelting system, I came up with this large convoluted device that in all honesty, I didn't fully know how it worked. When I showed it off, I mentioned there was probably an easier way to build this. Shwagu, a member of the CommunityCraft server, took up the challenge and showed me a way that was not only smaller, but also built in a way that could be understood. Between the two of us, we created a new smithy that was double the capacity of the first design. As always, I will be explaining exactly why this works the way it does. So if you're looking for just a walkthrough of the build, a full walkthrough will be available at the end of the video. We'll begin by taking a close look at the hopper. The hopper takes two actions once every cycle and cycles about three times a second. In the first step, the hopper will look at any inventory space above it and pull one item into its own internal inventory. In the second step, the hopper will look at its own internal inventory and push one item into a valid destination that its output nozzle is attached to. To make the smithy, we take advantage of the two different steps. In these two examples, the two separate stages can be seen. The first will show the hopper pulling items from above into its own inventory, but it can't output anything since there's no valid destination. So it skips the second step and starts the cycle again. And we can see that the items just pile up in its own internal inventory. In the second example, the first hopper pulls items out of the chest above it and then is able to output the same item into the hopper beside it because that hopper has a valid inventory space. The hopper, the second hopper, doesn't have anything with an inventory above it, so it can't do the first half of the cycle. However, once the first hopper puts something into the second hopper's inventory, it can do the second part of the cycle and output our test blocks into the chest. Note that both hoppers cycle simultaneously. So once they go through one cycle, the first with the first hopper succeeding and the second hopper failing, the first sand block will still be in the second hopper until they cycle again. While it's fast, there will be a delay between this, the input chest and the output chest, and that delay will increase the more hoppers you have. So in this next example, we can see that it's starting to look a little bit familiar. It's starting to look like what we have set up in our smithy over there. So what we have is an input chest where the first hopper is pulling items out of, and it has an output into this second hopper here. However, if we just throw an item into this chest here, it won't go into this hopper where we would expect it to go. It would actually go into this chest here because this hopper is also looking above it into any inventory space to pull an item out of. So once this hopper pulls an item out of the chest, well, this hopper pulls the item right out of this hopper. So if we throw a block in here, it actually ends up down here. So how do we prevent that? How do we get it to go into this hopper where we would need it to be? Well, what we have to do is disable the hoppers below these hoppers. And we can do that with a simple redstone signal. So if I take a couple of blocks here, put down a redstone line, and power it with, say, this redstone torch, now, once we put a sand block into our input chest, it no longer goes into this chest or any of the three hoppers. It ends up in this hopper here because it just runs through its cycles. Pulls, pushes. This one can't pull, so it just pushes. This one can't pull, and it can't push, so it just sits there. Well, once we disable this redstone signal, this hopper will pull from the inventory above it and then push into the chest below it and we get our sand block down here. Now, how do we take advantage of that so we can split things up, say, 
from one chest into the three chests evenly? Well, what we have to do is we have to detect when this hopper has something in it and then use that detection to disable the redstone signal. And that's where my previous setup came from with the redstone comparators, our block with a redstone torch, and then we've got to use a redstone repeater because if we use the redstone itself, it connects to the comparator, which can cause problems. So we just switch it over to a repeater, and there we go. So if I take something, so if I say grab three sand blocks, put it into our input, input chest, we saw it flash really quick, but we don't get anything in the chest. Now, why is that? Well, that's because they all ended up in the hoppers above it. The flash happened so quick that these hoppers here didn't have time to go through the second stage of the cycle, and they just stopped. But if I put in three more, we will get one item in each chest, and we will see that we've got you know three sand blocks stuck in the three hoppers and three sand blocks in the chest. Now, how do we get around that? Well, that's actually surprisingly simple. All we have to do is detect when something's going through the system. And we can do that just by extending this top hopper line by one, putting our chest above it, and then basically doing exactly what we have over here, over here. We put down a simple line where we can put our comparator down. And I always put a block underneath this hopper because I know the hoppers sometimes have problems being detected when there's no block underneath them. We put in our same redstone trick, and then we just make a line the whole way down to attach to this block. So basically what happens is that when there's nothing going through the system, nothing in this hopper at all, this line turns off. And obviously, you can see that we have two sand in each chest now. So it's a simple task. So if we take just three items in here, go through here, we end up with one sand block in each chest. Because what happened was this signal turned off once something started going through the system. This signal turned off to allow this system to work like it should. And then once everything got into the second set of hoppers there and this system was empty, this turned right back on again disabling this line, allowing these hoppers to empty their inventory. So if we take something that's divisible by three, say 54 here, and then we just take these 54 sand blocks, throw them in this chest here, we can see that this stays off while this starts blinking. And basically what's happening is every time this blinks, these three hoppers are full, while well, all of these hoppers are full, but then it allows these three hoppers to pull stuff out. And then once this line turns back on again, after it's done cycling its entire setup, we can see that we are even, 19, 19, 19, and we have nothing in these hoppers. And that is the complex part of our smithy here. We just take this idea, expand upon it a little bit, and set it up so that we have two lines going into each furnace. We have one coming in the top for what we want to cook, and we have one coming in the back for our fuel. Now, the only trick here is that these hoppers, to pull out of a furnace, will only pull items out of here. So the coal will stay put, and whatever we're cooking will stay put, 
until it's complete, and then it will go down our hopper line into our output chest. So let's run through how to build this entire setup right here. We begin by finding a place to put our chest. Since we're gonna need a little bit of space, this should work for us. We put down our output chest, and then we connect a hopper to the back of it. Now from this hopper, we go out four, and then back three. And then this way we have enough space to build our contraption over here, and then repeat it again on the other side. From here, we go back another eight hoppers, so we can put our eight furnaces on top of the eight hoppers. Then we need input into the furnaces, so we need eight hoppers on the back of the furnaces, and then eight hoppers on the top of the furnaces. The next step is we need the mechanism to put the items into these hoppers. And this is a little bit different, so pay attention. What we've got to do is make them all point that way. So we start by just having a random block. We're going to be removing it later. And we right click with the hopper on that block. That way its output is pointed that way. And then we do the same with the rest of the hoppers. And we go the whole way across so that all of the hoppers on top of these hoppers are all pointed in that direction. We do the same up here with this layer of hoppers. From here we remove these uppermost bricks because we won't be needing them, and then we take more blocks, pull each of them out one, and then we loop around. That way we can have a line of redstone going down the bottom layer of hoppers. And that's important, it's gotta be the bottom layer of hoppers. We repeat on this side. From here, we put a block one out from the hoppers on each layer, and then we connect the hopper to the block with a comparator. On the other side of the block, we put redstone torches, and then a repeater and a line of redstone the entire way down. And once again, on the other side. So from here, we have to continue into our input system. So we put a extra hopper on the outside and then on top. Now, these two hoppers will be the main two hoppers, the input for the cookable items and the input for the fuel. Underneath these, this one here and this one here, are actually what's going to control the main mechanism. So we need to put extra bricks on the outside, and then we need to bring it out one more, and we basically need to repeat over there what we created over here. So we put down two comparators, two sets of blocks, two redstone torches, and then we'll actually come out a little extra distance because once we're building this, we cannot have the redstone cross over. It will mess with the machine. So we have to come out an extra three, an, or a full three blocks, and then down the entire way until we are one extra away from this set of blocks and then we connect it right back up to the system. This one will be set up exactly the same, go the whole way down, except this one will actually not just go out one extra block, it will go out two extra blocks and around to connect. And I will show why this is in a moment. So from here, what we have to do is we have to connect that redstone torch to this block here. So we just bring our redstone signal out as far as it will go without running out. And we're going to have to add a repeater at some point in time. Where you add it doesn't really matter 
as long as it's activated by that redstone torch there and it's at its lowest setting. And then we loop around and connect another redstone repeater right at the block. Now this one up here is going to be ever so slightly different because if I just put down redstone here, obviously these two will connect. And since they're two different machines, basically, we need to make sure that they're not touching. So this one, we put the redstone repeater here and the redstone line there. And then we continue backwards along this line to where we think our redstone repeater is going to be needed. And then the whole way around to connect to this redstone torch. So basically what we have is the same exact thing on this side as we do on this side, just ever so slightly different so they don't cross over. So all we have to do is just repeat this build on the other side, and I will do that right now. So here we have it, an almost exact duplicate on this side of what we had previously built on this side. So from here, all we have to do is connect up our input hoppers and then add our chest to each of the individual lines of hoppers. So we have one here, and then we have to add a trapped chest here, which will allow two chests to sit by, side by side. And then from here, we can just label them simply that way we can tell which one's which now this one goes the whole way to the outside and to the lower row of hoppers so this one here is for the fuel and thus this one here is for the general input and that's that we have our working smithy from here you can run your hopper lines to wherever you need to go just make sure that you always have two coming out of each input chest. And due to how fast this system works, make sure you have two hopper lines going into your output chest. I hope you enjoy your super fast smithy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And if you have any requests for my next learning with Chrono, I look forward to reading them. So until next time, I say as always, keep playing the game and have fun.